So I was at Target yesterday looking around to see which board games I had available in the store. So I can make this video for you right now, the top 10 Target tabletop, top 10 terrific tabletop Target transactions. I know someone's probably gonna leave a comment of the perfect word for transactions I can't think of right now. Make me super jealous I didn't think of it myself. So what I did is brought my phone along and kind of awkwardly took a few pictures of the shelves as I went along and then attempted to, as you see, stitch all the pictures together decently in Photoshop. It's a little rough around the edges because camera distortion and some details that you probably don't care about. Put them all together. What I'm going to go through is kind of shelf by shelf, talk about why I think the best games are and the best deals are on each shelf. So we're going to start on the far right shelf of the store and kind of work our way through that way because I think it starts off actually worse, gets better and better and better as you go along, and then kind of tapers off at the end. But will make it for a little more exciting video. So as you see here, we start off with some great games like Sorry and Perfection and Bop It and Kerplunk. These are kind of more what I would say, you know, are just like classic, classic, just board games that we've had around for a long time. Nothing really special there. No really great deals there either. Um, Yeti and My Spaghetti is a somewhat newer game. Um, it's it's fine. It's basically you have little tiny spaghetti noodles and you're trying to get the Yeti to balance on them. You're trying to remove one at a time. Whenever you move the last one, the Yeti falls into the, the bowl. Um, so one of those games, it's fine if you want to play a game like that with a very young kid. But yeah, this shelf, this shelf is kind of rough. If you want to see my amazing Photoshop skills, you can check out right here words like Sonian because again, I had to crop the photos together. So yes. Moving right on to the next shelf, which also doesn't have that much exciting, except you know what? Operation has been around forever. Operation is not a great board game, but with the right kids, it can be a lot of fun. And for 14 bucks, you know, Every child needs to experience the frustration of trying to grab grab something out of a human body and the buzzer on his nose going off because that's that's kind of how it really works. It's a good training for their their medical career as they get older. Moving down from there, we have Connect Four Shots where you bounce the ball and play Connect Four because you know that's what we really needed out of Connect Four. This is kind of a weird section. You're going to see a lot of these coming up where you get like chess, but with the Mario theme and checkers and this theme and Monopoly this theme. Um, these games mean nothing to me. I guess if you really, really love chess, but you think it will only be better if you play it with Luigi and Mario and Yoshi and company, then then yeah, I mean, by all means, get it. We have a giant rip, rip off of uh, Jenga and then a little tiny ski ball, which I always recommend never gain these things because they always seem fun. Like, oh, you know what? Ski ball is expensive. Get the whole thing. I can get this little tiny, little tiny package of ski ball and they're never, they're never that fun. They never work that well. So um, moving on to the next shelf. Now I warned you we were going to go quickly through these early ones because the early shelves are not that good. But on to the next one here, we have some classics like Uno and stuff. Nothing really that exciting to recommend here, except you know what? It's pretty well known now, but in case you don't know it, Spot It is actually a pretty fun game. It's just you, you're trying to, there's a lot of different ways you can play, but everyone has a card full of symbols and there's a card in the middle full of symbols and every single person has one match with the card in the center. So it's just kind of a clever, simple, but clever idea where you're trying to match something and every single person around the table has one match with the card in the center. Then we move right on from there to some of the worst games in existence like Life and Monopoly, one of some of the worst games. And this game here, Jumanji, I want to point out because Jumanji is, I think that's $54. It's kind of a blurry photo. This is Jumanji Deluxe. Jumanji is a terrible game. If you're expecting like, oh, this is one of, you know, Target's more hobby board games that are more interesting, have more going on. No, it's basically just a random roll and move game with a couple little things you can do that don't even work that well. The things you can do in the game, everyone just kind of hold on to and use when they need to. And it's really tough to even end the game. So I just want to point that one out as actually a negative one. You see that box where you're thinking, oh, this is just one of the Target selections that kind of add to their, their variety and the hobby, like, you know, interesting board games. It's not, it's not a good game. And it's definitely not a good game to spend. I think that blurry number is 54. I probably can tell on the computer later on, but right now, yeah, don't get Jumanji and don't pay $54 for Jumanji unless you love the theme so much, you're willing to just do a roll of move game where you just move around the map and the best rolls win. And then they get it. Now we're still heavily in mainstream world with games like Scrabble and, and Yahtzee right now and Clue, uh, Risk. I'm not impressed by any of these games that much really. Um, down at the bottom, if you don't own a chess set, you can buy a set of chess and checkers or a whole bunch of different classic games that come in this one. 
chess and checkers, they're, they're fine games. I think, think chess is pretty enjoyable. So if you want to pick up a chess set, it doesn't look like a terrible place to get one. Now we're about to get onto some more hobby board games. Obviously, not categories. But the bottom of the shelf here, I want to point out Splendor. Now I said before on the channel that uh, it's not that I don't like Splendor. It's I, I don't get why Splendor is as popular as it is. Not really a game for me. I want to point this one out because Target kind of has two modes when they get to these hobby board games. They have really good deals. Like I originally picked up actually Machi Koro at Target. It was such a good price for a game. I was like, wow, it's like a legitimate game for so cheap. They have two modes. They have that and they have the really expensive mode. And this here, like $45 for Splendor, I think I've seen it online for like 20 bucks. Um, yeah, 20 bucks online. So uh, that, that's really expensive. You're going to get like a deck or two of cards worth of cards and like some heavy poker chips, which are high quality chips to trade in for your stuff. But $45 of stuff, the contents of this box right here fits like into my hand like like this. So anyways, that's, that's a terrible deal. Unless of course you want to buy it like at a local board game store and support them and it costs that. Local board game stores have to have prices typically higher than something like a Target would have. But I just think it's a crazy price to pay at Target. Moving right along here, you actually have to use your imagination a little bit because somehow in the transition of these two pictures, I actually the store, I did not completely capture, this would be a little quiz for those of you, what games are these two games that are cut off by my camera? Not Catan, obviously, but on the other side, not the letter N, but it is Wingspan. If you are kind of getting into hobby board games, you even tried a lot of them out, I think it's a pretty interesting one. It has some cool play with like trying to get food, to feed birds. If you feed the birds, you can attract the birds to your aviary. So you have birds you're collecting in front of you. Then all the birds you collect are going to give you some sort of bonus. And it's great looking. Like if you haven't ever experienced like modern board games, if you open the game of Wingspan up, you feel like you're getting this most deluxe thing ever because it's not just like everything cheap plastic, but there are like nice cars with unique art of different birds in North America on every single card and then like there's like eggs that feel really good the eggs you lay on your card you get extra points and stuff you have to like spend eggs sometimes you get new birds they have a nice like kind of matte texture to them definitely of all the games i think i've talked about so far yeah it's the best game we've come across so far and then right below wingspan here again it's even more difficult to guess right there that brown one high in the corner also cut off like wingspan was is a game of parks and, and no it does not cost 9.99 that refers to whatever game was sitting on the shelf right there. But Parks, like Wingspan, is another great looking game that feels very deluxe. You have all these like wooden components that different colors for things like sun tokens and mountain tokens and tree tokens, forest tokens, then also like great art on the cards. There's all the different um, national parks in North America, I believe is what they are. And they're not just like photographs of the parks, but really, really, really nice artwork on all the cards. And the game is actually pretty fun. You, you move down a trail collecting these tokens. And then at the end of each season, you kind of get to the end of the trail, you're going to trade in tokens to visit the park. So some national parks that maybe are more mountainous make you trade in mountain tokens to visit them. Some of them more sun, some of them more water. So really cool mechanism of how you move down the trail. You can move as far as you want to so you can get the spots before your opponent. But once you move down, you can't move backwards. So it's great. I probably, I probably personally like it a little more than Wingspan. It's also similar in complexity. These games are both like medium weight games. Parks might be a little easier, but I don't think not too much. They're both kind of in that solidly medium weight board games. Again, both great looking games, both really, really good solid games. Now the next top shelf here is really unique. It's full of a whole bunch of different types of games. First there's Taboo. Now, again, some board gamers hate all old games and they're all garbage. I think Taboo is actually pretty fun trying to say a word without saying particular words that are related to it. It's really hard to do. Fun, chaotic game. You can yell at each other and be like, no, 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 you said that word you weren't allowed to say. So I think Taboo is a fun, fun party game. A uh, Happy Little Dinosaurs. It's a hysterical idea for a game. As you see the front cover, is a happy little dinosaur about to get pulverized by a meteor shower. Um, you need a little bit of a twisted sense of humor. It's very funny. For the, all these cards, you have all the dinosaurs, you have your unique dinosaurs, and they all have different like insecurities the game is about. So, you know, it's like one of your dinosaurs might have a card that does damage, but it's not like get hit by spear, but the damage is like you wore the wrong outfit to a party and kind of that kind of that sense of humor. So I think it's really fun. The mechanisms are pretty good. It, it, it's a decent game too. But again, it's kind of relying on that sense of like, oh wow, that's, that's 
pretty funny cards too. So decent game, but also really funny. So again, you need a little bit of a twisted sense of humor though to appreciate it. Um, the next game here is Shadows Casting. Oh, oh, it's just upside down. Someone just put the box upside down. Okay, I thought it was really clever and I, I, I thought it was like shadow. So they wrote it backwards and upside down to be like, oh, it's very artistic and backwards and upside down. But it looks like from the box over here that it's actually casting shadows and maybe it's not upside down. Um, as you, yeah, yeah, I think it's just was upside down. I thought it was being really clever. You know, like there's a shadow being cast on a wall but it's in reverse or something, but no, it just looks like uh, it kind of looks like Smorda Hoskesung Kata. But anyways, I've never heard of this game before. It looks kind of interesting, but I've never even heard it mentioned. So maybe someone let us know in the comments down below. It looks kind of cool. Is it actually a cool game or is it just like some of the games here are not actually cool games. But up next here we have Catan and Catan is again one of these games that are just old so it gets a lot of hate I think for being old. That being said I, I don't think it's a terrible game. I think it's it's a it's a fine game if you've never played a game like it before. It's a decent kind of resource management, build your empire up. I kind of think of it actually as a replacement to Monopoly. Instead of like building your empire up in Monopoly and trying to get all the properties, you're trying to build your little tiny like settlements out and expand out. So it's a decent game. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit here and check out the game of Throw Throw Burrito or Throw Throw Avocado and Throw Throw Burrito. Um, I've never played these before. The idea is you have these basically different situations where you flip over a card, people are gonna be throwing these objects at each other. They're not hard, they're very soft. Um, I felt one of the things before, but I never actually played the game. But it's a silly game. That's kind of for kids. And I've heard from kids that thought it was hilarious and loved it and wanted to play it again. So, I mean, it has a vote of confidence from children that it accomplished the goal of being a silly game where you pick up these ridiculous items and throw them at each other and hopefully not hurt each other too badly. Um, Below this though, we have an interesting game called Wavelength. Now Wavelength is kind of a party game where you're just gonna have, not, not something to be taken too seriously, but it has an interesting way of kind of, oh, I just realized the box cover is people's heads facing each other. I've always kind of wondered what that was. I thought it was like abstract art, which it is kind of. I just never realized there was actually the heads growing and expanding towards each other with the Wavelink in the middle. Sorry, I just had this realization as I'm filming this video. But Wavelink is an interesting game where you try to ask people, hey, what do you like this or this? And of course you don't like things 100% more and 0%. You might be like, oh, I like this pretty well. So you kind of give your Wavelink of how much you like something and you cover it up so people can't see. And other people are trying to guess what kind of, where did you put your wavelength? Are you like, oh yeah, I prefer this 75%, do I prefer this 65%? And the close people can kind of guess to how your your preference percentage-wise, you not really, you don't have to do math. There's not numbers. You're just kind of doing a slider back and forth of how much you like something like, you know, middle, like, like this one. And so people are just trying to guess kind of where your preference lies. So interesting way to kind of do a game. Right beside it, we have Azul. And I think Azul is a really, really cool game. Um, I've mentioned before, I like it more two player because it's a little more strategic. This is another game that I want to point out for $36, it seems like a lot. So like I said, Target kind of has two modes. They seem like they try to really make their money off some games. And then some games they have for good prices. And this one, I was like, whoa, $36. Uh, I'm 100% sure you can find it cheaper online right now because I you know, recently did my video of top 10 games for 20 or less dollars. However, maybe I bought it from Target. Maybe I paid $36 for it. Maybe. On to the next shelf. And of all these crazy games up here, I really just wanted to point out this one right here, which I think is a great game. The Chameleon is a really, really fun party game and apparently only $18. So maybe I should have bought this yesterday and I saw because I didn't even look at the price. Only $18 is a really, really good deal. I don't actually own my own copy of the, of the Chameleon. I play someone else's. All right, after the chameleon, we have an entire shelf dedicated to different types of exploding kittens. Um, I don't hate exploding kittens, like lots of people hate exploding kittens. It's not a game I'd want to play often, but it's just kind of for a good laugh. You play a card and go, ha ha, like I defused exploding kittens and I'm gonna mess up this here. Now you're, you're, you blew up and you lost a round. It's not a great game, but it, it is a funny game. Below that though, I want to bring attention to this game, A Little Wordy, which I believe is by the same people who made exploding kittens, which I had, set my expectations really low for this game because again, Exploding Kittens is more funny than it is fun. But A Little Wordy is actually a really interesting two player only card game, which I just now lost, there it is. It's a really interesting two player only, not card game, but word game where you write down a word 
I think you're having like a, a bank of tiles that you can use to basically make up your word. But once you make up a word, what makes it interesting is you're trying to guess the other person's word and you're, you're, the way you get clues though is pretty interesting. You flip out cards, so it's always different when you play and they give you the questions you're allowed to ask. Like some of the cards say, tell me what your first letter is. Well, that's a lot more powerful than a card that might allow you to say, do you have a T? But the cards have different prices and you keep track of how much you paid for the clues you ask for. So it's not necessarily the person who guesses the other person's word first, but it's the person who's able to guess their word in the fewest number of points. I thought it was a really cool twist on just like a simple two player kind of guess the word the other person wrote down in game. So pretty decent. And again, really surprised that I'm pretty sure it comes from the same people who do Exploding Kittens, which was pretty surprising. Up next here, we have a shelf full of mostly games that are bad, or I should at least say games that aren't my style of games, like tell me without telling me, most likely to dot, 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 same but different, would you rather? Not my kind of game at all. So I do want to though, go to the bottom and point out Telestrations. I hate drawing, I do not like drawing at all. But Telestrations, I've actually had decent times. You don't have to be good at drawing, you're trying basically like, write down a sentence and then the next person has to turn that sentence into a picture and then pass it on the table. It's actually a decently fun game. It's a game that, a party game, that does work with very, very, very large groups. It's kind of unique. I've, I've played it with, I don't know what it says in the box. I can't really tell, but I've played it with like big groups of like more than 10 people because it's just the more people you add, the more you just, you just pass to the left and everyone draws and everyone's writing at the same time. So it doesn't really matter how big a group gets. So it's actually a decent game that does incorporate drawing. And then last game of the day, I just wanted to point out, um, I missed this earlier, I guess. Um, Hang on, hang on, let me see. Oh no, do they not have the crew? I thought I saw the crew yesterday. Hang on, I'm gonna go look up on my computer really quick and see if they have the crew. Be right back. Well, I guess I'm just totally making this up because it doesn't sound like they sell the crew anymore, um, which is kind of sad. I looked online and I just said out of stock. So I'm to plan on getting it back. I think I actually originally bought the crew at Target for like five bucks. The Crew is an amazing card game. And when it was only $5, one of the number one reasons you should buy a card game at Target, but maybe they just, aren't selling it there anymore, or maybe it will get back in stock eventually. Maybe it's just out of stock online and at all their stores because it's such an amazing game. That's what I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe that it was there and it was all sold out. And one more game that somehow didn't make it into any of my pictures because again, I felt really awkward going there and like snapping pictures on my phone and somehow I just missed some of them. Everdell, they actually sold Everdell there. Um, Everdell is kind of like Wingspan and Parks territory as far as like actually being a legitimate, really, really good game. It also looks amazing. You'll have like these resources that have textures on them. The stone is really smooth like a stone and the berries are like squishy like berries. So Everdell, amazing game. However, it was one of these weird ones where it was $75. Everdell is a bigger game with more in the box. So kind of expect to pay more for it if you get it than your average game. But I was kind of surprised it was $75. So even though that might be the crew is not there. So I would say the best games at Target that I saw would be um, Wingspan, Everdell, and Parks, probably in order for me of Everdell, Parks, and Wingspan, kind of all, probably in that order. Everdell is my favorite. However, I thought the price on Everdell was really bad. So if you really want to get it from Target just because you're there and want to pick it up and don't care to pay $75, $76 for it, go for it. If not, maybe shop around. Hopefully you can find a price for like at least 20 less than that. All right, there are my adventures of looking at the board games they sell in Target. Hopefully you enjoy kind of going through the journey of me looking at my I'm going to say good crop pictures because again, because of distortion and issues, it's really hard to get them to line up top and middle and bottom perfectly. But hopefully that was fun. Those are what I kind of think about of the main games that kind of stuck out to me as I walked on the store. There's anything you saw in there that I didn't point out. Some of it's just because maybe they're classic games that I just don't like. And I figure I might as well not mention every single one by name, or maybe it's just one that I've never played before. I didn't really talk about much. So if you have something that you like to fill in a gap of a game you saw, um, Horrified would be a good example of one that I've never played, so I just didn't really talk about much, even though it was there. If you have something you like to kind of fill in the gaps for people so they check out this video, they're like, oh, hey, what about that game? They can read the comments and kind of see what your thoughts were on some of the games I didn't mention. Thanks so much for checking the video out, and I'll see you in the next one.